You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help others with the game. State your name for the record. Keona Antoinette. Why Antoinette? Because I like how it flows with my first name. Okay. So what makes you an entrepreneur? Man. You know, so technically, I guess an entrepreneur is someone who goes into business for themselves. Um, so that's a, a very huge part of it. The other thing I feel like is, you know, I don't wait for somebody to feed me. I go out there and I get it for myself, you know, and I get it for my family. And I feel like that's the heart of an entrepreneur. When you say you don't wait for someone to feed you, what does that mean? Just in life, you know, people working nine to fives, you have to wait for somebody to give you your check so that you can literally and go, go feed yourself, go put gas in your car. You have to wait for somebody to tell you, yes, you could take a vacation. Yes, you can have a break right now. And with an entrepreneur, you don't have to do that because you decide when you want to take time off. You decide how much you're going to get paid, what your value is. You don't have to wait for somebody to tell you what you're worth. I don't have to wait for somebody to feed me. If I want to go out, if I want to eat, I got to go out there and get it for myself, you know, and get it for my family. So I like how you said, go get it for your family. So when you go get it for your family, are we talking about generational wealth as well? We're talking about residual income, passive income, generational wealth. We're talking about, you know, I want to teach my kids to be leaders and bosses and not to be employees. Because when you have an employee mindset, you're always waiting for somebody to feed you. You know, you're always waiting for somebody to give you a chance to tell you what you're worth. What am, what am I worth to you? I can do all of this. Can, can I help you? Can I do this for you? And then you tell me what you want to give me. When you're a leader, when you're a boss, when you're an entrepreneur, you tell other people what you're worth and they can either respect it, you know, or move around. Um, and that's like the hustle with being an entrepreneur. So if I instill that into my children now, they're going to take that and they're going to run with it. They're going to do better than I'm doing with it and hopefully teach their kids. And yes, it'll create generational wealth. So in terms of employees, right, because you don't want your kids to be an employee, isn't being an employee a bad thing? No, being an employee is not a bad thing. I feel like everybody has their role. So as an entrepreneur, I need staff, volunteers, employees to help me establish my dream or bring my dream to fruition. So it's definitely not a bad thing. I just know that I don't have an employee mindset. So it's not based on whether you're supposed to be an entrepreneur or an employee, based on whether mindset and on which lane you're supposed to flow in. Absolutely knowing which lane. You know, early on, I didn't know which lane and I didn't even know that was an issue. You know, I had my life set up. I was like, I'm going to work this job 30 years. I'm going to retire. And then after I retire, life is going to be good. And then probably three years ago is when it clicked for me, you know, and I realized I don't like doing this. I don't like somebody telling me when I could take my breaks. I don't like someone telling me when I can do this or that or if I can go home and spend time with my family. If you really think about it, you spend so much time working for somebody else. And so I just realized if I have to work to eat, right, I should work for myself and be able to create my own schedule and be able to do things in my own way and be able to include my children. Okay, so I like how you said, you know, you want to feed yourself, but tell me how you're feeding yourself. Tell me about your business, Positive Women Meetup. So Positive Women Meetup is a power networking platform for women, especially for women of color, you know, but we accept all women. We want to help all women. And what we do is we host um, quarterly workshops and events, empowerment events. Um, I started it about six years ago now. It's been a dream a passion of mine going back 10 12 years and i just wanted to bring women together so that we could empower mentor and network with each other i didn't see a lot of that and i've always been the type of person where if i don't see something happening or if it's not available then i make it happen and you know there were a lot of networking or empowering events in los angeles but you know that's down the freeway i live in the ie and L.A. can be a little pretentious. 
I got tired of going out there. You can't find parking. You go to a, an event that's supposed to be networking based and you can't really network. It's swarms of people. And I feel like anybody in a scenario where there's a, where there's a lot of people, you kind of, you know, you kind of play like the back role a little bit and you are not like your full self because there are so many people to network with. There are lines waiting to talk to these speakers, lines waiting to talk to these business owners. And I just got tired of that. And I said, I want to do something out here where women can actually talk to the CEO. They can actually talk to the staff that, you know, are putting on the event or the sponsors, or um, they're actually going home with tools that are going to help improve their lives personally and professionally. And so I did it. Now in 2019, on top of the empowerment events that we're doing, we're also doing um, master classes. I want to teach people how I obtained my success. It was a lot of trial and error. It was a lot of me asking people that, you know, I looked up to or that I admired and I didn't, I wasn't really getting the response that I thought I should get. And I'm like, what's the big secret? So I want to share that information with other people. So we're doing empowerment events. We're doing master classes. We're uh, providing consultation services, strategy sessions, just to empower women in their personal lives and in their professional lives. That's what Positive Women Meetup is about. So you said you like to share the knowledge with others. And it kind of sounds like people weren't so willing to share the knowledge with you. Like they kept it a secret. Um, do you find that a yeah. lot in business? I do, unfortunately. And I think it goes back to, you know, people, when you find out some information, you feel, you know, proud of that. You feel a certain success with it. But then along the way, people forget that they were once in the place where they needed direction. They needed tools. They needed information. And I feel like people get like haughty about themselves and they're like, you know, well, I got it. I don't have to give it to you or I don't want you to become my competitor. I don't really understand that world, um, but it was hard for me to get information from other people. And I wasn't asking them to give me their business plan or, you know, give me all the tools that they had, you know, in their tool bag. But just give me direction. Which path should I go down? You know, do you prefer this or that? What do you think about this? And I was almost met with radio silence. I would email people and I wouldn't get a response. You know, I would try and meet with people and either wouldn't get a response or when I met with them, they were just like, it was closed. They were closed mouths, you know? And I just, I'm not that type of person. If I have some knowledge, I am going to share it. Um, I'm going to, you know, make suggestions or help you along the way. And I know that, you know, certain things have to happen in business. So if you're selling the information, then cool. But everything doesn't have to be a secret. You know, I just don't understand that. And I'm just not cut from that type of cloth. So. So do you feel like in business, like let's say, for example, Target versus Walmart, they wouldn't share information because they are each other's competitors, right? Mm -hmm. And so do you feel like it's more of an intimidation that you're their competitor or are you guys in two separate lanes and they're just not trying to get the information out? You know, when I was starting out, I don't even think anybody saw me as a competitor because Positive Women Meetup didn't start out as a business. It started out as a passion project. I think that, you know, people were just, this goes, this is going to lead down a rabbit hole because, you know, I feel like what it stems from is people are unprofessional and people, you know, put on like a facade, you know, they'll get on YouTube or get at these speaking, they'll come to these speaking conventions and they want people to praise them about what they're doing and how far they've come. But when you try and, you know, tug their ear a little bit, tap them on the shoulder, you know, and like, hey, can you take a look at this? Just something simple. They don't have to write their, your business plan for you or tell you, hey, don't do this or that, or here are my trade secrets. No, but they can point you in the right direction. They can save you some trouble, you know, if they dealt with a hardship and they, you know, they see that you're maybe going down that path, they can say, hey, you know what? To avoid this, do this. Or you're looking to start a business, you should shut you should set up an LLC. This is the easiest way to do it. Or make a suggestion. Hey, you know what? I know a fellow business owner that's doing a little bit of the same thing that you're doing. Maybe you should talk to them. It doesn't have to be sharing trade secrets or giving the person's, you know, giving your business plan over. Um, it doesn't have to be that, but there should be some kind of help me, you know, um, there should be some kind of networking um, where everything isn't kept a secret to the point where it becomes unprofessional or it becomes competition, you know, 
there's like this stereotypical thing where there's competition amongst women and I've witnessed it. I've been like, uh, I haven't done it to people, but I've been, I guess you could say like the victim of it. I don't look at other women as my competition. I look at other women as my peers, you know, and someone I can either learn from or someone that I can teach something to. It's all a big, you know, cycle. We're either teaching or we're learning. We're teaching or we're learning. Um, so I don't look at other other women, especially, but other people as competition. You know, they might be somewhere where I would like to be, but I need to grind and get there. What has been your biggest challenge as an entrepreneur? My biggest challenge as an entrepreneur Man, there have been so many challenges. Um, I believe my biggest one has probably been believing in myself, honestly, because when you believe in yourself, you can get a whole lot done. You don't have to know how to do it. You don't have to have the recipe for it, but you just have to have the tenacity for it, right? So if you're focused and determined, it doesn't matter how many roadblocks or, or hurdles are in your way. You're going to jump over them. You're going to you know, slide to the left, slide to the right and get it done. And with me, Early on, you know, I was looking for my my friends, you know, my close cir circle to support me. I'm like, man, I'm finna start this women empowerment group. And I just knew all my friends were going to attend every event. I just knew they were going to, you know, really support me by being there. And I found along the way that there are many ways to show support. And I was just so ultra focused on you know, well, they didn't come to this event, you know, and then when I started, when the event got bigger and I started selling tickets, well, they didn't buy a ticket to this event. I was so focused on that for a moment that I didn't realize that I was like being distracted. So I was in my own way because none of that mattered. You know, my friends can show support in many different ways and they have, but I needed to believe in myself and what I was structuring what I was putting together, what I was creating and just move forward with it because that, you know, that's what mattered. So that was my biggest roadblock. That was my biggest struggle. Just believing in myself early on. And I'll say, I'll add to that, believing in myself consistently because, you know, in entrepreneurship, you have highs and lows, you know, you might be doing really good, sold out product or sold out event or service and everything's all good. And then the next day, the next week, the next month, it can plummet, you know, or it can like slide down a little bit and it's not doing as good. And I didn't understand initially how much that would affect me internally, because when you're running a business, that's your baby. You want everybody to love it just as much as you love it. So when people aren't, you know, buying that product service, you know, or attending that event as much as you think they should, it kind of hurts a little bit, you know, but that's all I'm going to say about that. Next question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so what is your ultimate goal? Do you want to be famous or do you want the fortune? Like what is your goal with being an entrepreneur? I know you kind of talked about generational wealth, but is there an end goal? An end goal. Wow. You know, I've never, I've never thought about that because I see what I'm doing as ongoing. And, um, I definitely don't want fame because I feel like that comes with a whole bunch of stuff that I'm I'm not built for. You know, I'm not really the type of person that like to be in front of the camera. You know, um, I don't, I built this platform, Positive Women Meetup, to help other women shine, you know, and that's the truth of it, to help other women network with each other and connect with each other, collaborate, you know, mentor each other and things like that. So I don't want the fame, you know, I do want, Positive Women Meetup LLC to be a household name. I want people to, when they think of a dope event, I want them to say Positive Women Meetup. I want them to tell their friends and family, you know what, Positive Women Meetup, they're having another event in two months. You need to be there because they're giving out information. They're giving out tools. I want people to say, you know what, I want to start my event or project and I don't know what to do. Oh, Positive Women Meetup. Let me call them up and get a strategy session going. That's what I want to happen. Um, as far as fortune, you know, money, I feel like that'll come as long as I'm staying on the path that I'm supposed to be on, not getting greedy, not getting distracted, you know, staying in my lane and walking in my purpose, you know, um, the money will come. I'm not really worried about that. I'm doing this because I truly have a passion for empowering women and youth. And it's something that I wake up at night thinking about. I wake up at night, I have a notepad 
a notepad by my bed for ideas that I think of randomly. I carry another notepad in my car, one in my purse, you know, because I just jot down ideas. Like I get goosebumps thinking about empowering women and youth and putting together another event or project or helping somebody, you know, and being the spark that makes their idea bright. So that's what feeds me, you know. I hope that my my children would love to take on this business, you know, when I'm not able-bodied to do it anymore, but I'm sure they have their own dreams, you know, and I'm going to support them within that. But I want to teach them how to grind and get it for themselves so no matter what they do, they can get it done. Okay, so it sounds like you're building a legacy. So let me ask you this, though, jumping gears. You know, why do you only have a few friends when you come across so many positive women? That's a good question. I got to keep my circle small because... You know, and this is just personally for me, all, well, I'll say most of my friends have been my friend since adolescence. I have a few friends that I've met in my adult life, you know, but we've all either been through something together, something major, or upon meeting them and having this friendship with them, I've learned their true character and it matches with mine, you know, where our spirits match. I don't believe in having a lot of people in my quote unquote circle because for one, I don't have time to <laughs> deal with a whole bunch of people, you know. Um, I got a family, I have a business, and I don't want anybody to feel left out. The other thing is when you're, the, the bigger your circle gets, the more you have to watch for snakes. You know, that's just real. You never really know who is for you. And I'd rather ride for the people that that ride for me. You know, the people that I've known, you know, before I was a 33-year-old Kiona, you know, the people that knew me when I was eight, when I was 12, you know, when I was 16, and they have stood the test of time. I'd rather ride with those people. I'd rather ride with the people that I met in college or after college, and they remain my friend, and they ask me, how my children are doing you know they ask me what's going on with business hey let's go to brunch let's just talk about this or that and it's not about what i can do for them so i'm come across you know a lot of positive women i come across a lot of women in general because of the events that we do um because of the consultations that i offer and things like that but every every positive woman is not meant to be my friend I'm not meant to be their friend. It might just be some business, you know? I might just be in their life to inspire them. It doesn't mean because they come to a positive women meetup that all of a sudden we're best friends. Um, does it mean that I don't want to be an encouragement to them or even that they can't be an encouragement to me? No, it doesn't mean that. But everybody you meet is not your friend. And that's just in anything. Okay. So how do you balance family, career, and positive women meetup? It is a juggling act for sure because so I own my own business. I'm also a realtor. I have two beautiful children. You know, I'm married and it's a lot to handle, but I just juggle it. You know, I get up every day and I'm like, okay, what do I need to get done today? I, like I said, I carry a notepad with me all the time and I plan things out. I make my little to-do lists and, you know, I that's how I get things done. I just, what do I need to get done today? Because I can't think about seven days from now or seven weeks from now if I don't have today handled. So I think about what I need to get done today, what's most important, what can wait, what's least important. You know, I put time frames and expiration dates on things and I just got to, I got to get it done because if I don't, nobody else will. But it's exciting though. I like having a lot to do because I remember a time when I prayed for this, you know, after I had my daughter, um, I... I wasn't really doing anything. I was just going to work, you know, had a nine to five. I was going to work and I almost felt like I lost myself because, you know, when you're pregnant, your body changes, you know, after pregnancy, your body changes and you're not able to do things like you used to because now you have a little person attached to you that needs everything from you. Right. So I couldn't do as much as I was used to doing. I couldn't travel like I used to travel. I couldn't just hop up and decide, okay, I'm about to go to lunch with my friends because I have a baby, literally, right? So I remember praying like, I just want to be busy. I just want to be busy. I just want to empower women. I just want to, 
give what was given to me. You know, I had some mentors in my life growing up that I feel like really blessed me. And I just wanted to do that. And again, you know, when I see that there's a need for something, I don't see it being done anywhere else. I created. So I created Positive Women Meetup. And like I said, I prayed for this. I prayed to be busy. So I wouldn't dare, you know, complain about it because this is what I wanted. So in business, I know it's hard to um, obtain capital to do your ideas. How do you go about um, securing funding for your projects? Well, there's a lot of different ways. You know, I'm still learning as as I go, but I didn't start Positive Women Meetup with, you know, a huge amount of money. I started it literally with an idea and the money I had in my checking account. And, you know, you don't need a lot of money to start anything. What you need is tenacity and focus and determination. You need to just get it done because the truth be told, we probably spend money on things that we don't even need on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. You know, you out buying the, the J's and it's nothing against buying J's or whatever it is that you want, but you cannot buy it once or twice and put the money towards your business. So I just started where I was at. I considered taking out a small business loan, but I don't like to owe nobody. I don't like to be in debt. So I decided not to do that. And eventually it turned into what the event is now with Pause Women Meetup, where we sell tickets for our empowerment events. And, um, you know, that's just what I did. And the other things um, that I've done are securing sponsorships. You know, that can help in more ways than one, either monetary sponsorships or product sponsorships, you know, to help ticket sales or to help attract um, people to your event or your project. So, um, you know, I learned a little bit with sponsorship acquisition through trial and error, and that has helped me along the way in the last six years as well. So you said you kind of took from your own personal check-ins account. So did it affect the household's income? And how does your husband feel about, you know, you using income for your projects and how does he feel about you being an entrepreneur? So it's two different mm -hmm. questions. Okay, so my husband was an entrepreneur when I met him. And I thought he was crazy. I was like, don't be over here talking to me about, no, maybe you could quit your job and do this and that. He's been on the entrepreneurship, uh, he's been on the entrepreneurship train forever, for a long time. He's, nat he's a natural at it. Um, he already had a few businesses before we got married. I just kind of came into entrepreneurship around seven, eight years ago, meaning being interested in it. He does not mind me being an entrepreneur, you know, because he's one too. Um, he believes that's the way to go, and it probably took a while to convince me, you know, but I'm on, I'm on the train now with him. Um, he does not mind about using income from our household to fund our dreams. He's definitely all for it. The thing that we sit down and do, though, is that we budget. So I'm not just willy nilly out here like, OK, I'm going to take two hundred seventy five dollars and do blah, blah, blah. I, you know, take things to him and I talk to him about it. This is where I'm trying to go with this. I think it'll take this much money or I looked it up and it cost this much money or whatever. We talk about it. And if it turns out to be, you know, a good investment or a good business move, then I move forward with it. But, you know, I always talk to him about things and he's very supportive of me being in business, me being an entrepreneur, a positive women meetup, um, me being a realtor. He's actually a realtor too. So it's easy going as far as that. So you talk about being a creative and I know that you do positive women meetup. That is your baby. But besides that, because you talk about being a creative, I know you're a creative. What are the other things that you do? Oh man, I think that the term is Renaissance woman. So I do a lot. So, okay. Positive women meetup, empowerment. Um, I'm a motivational speaker. Realtor, I already mentioned that. I also write poetry. Um, I've written like some short stories and things that I wanted to turn into like plays and stuff like that. Um, I've done some acting. So if any of you watch Black and Sexy TV, you probably saw me on an episode of Becoming Nia. Um, I've done some other acting besides that. And um, I like to make things. So in the true sense of the word creative, it's not just one thing that I like to create. I I do a lot and it's been like that since I was little. You know, my mother was a creative. My siblings are both creatives. Um, so I have that like in my blood. You know, one day I could be, you know, creating in, in the form of words. I could be doing poetry, you know, or going to present my poetry, doing some spoken word or something like that. Or the next day I could be writing a short story. The next day, you know, I might be creating an outfit or something like that. I might be painting. 
Um, but a creative is somebody who, you know, you have a vision, you see things in a different way and you make it happen. So yeah, those are all the things that I do. And there's probably some more that I didn't list. Just whatever I feel like doing, I can do anything I want. So I like that. So where do you see yourself 10 years from now? 10 years from now, I will be a full-time entrepreneur. I'll have some investment properties. I will be empowering women and youth to do the same teaching. I want to teach people, you know, how to get it done because again, I don't understand what the big secret is. So when I get it figured out, I'm going to share and bring other people up with me. I'll be traveling with my close friends and my family to, you know, tropical destinations and just having fun living life. You know, I don't want anybody's thumb on my back. I don't want anybody telling me what, when I can do this or when I can do that. But I will have some successful businesses. I'll have a immaculate investment portfolio and I'll just be living life and, you know, sharing the life lessons with other people. So what are some successful tips that you give um, new entrepreneurs? Man, I want my lawyer. This interview is over. Grind face. <laughs>